because the next thing we're going to do is add some background colors and background images to make the page stand out. And the first that it's going to start actually with design. And what I want to do is I want to take this color and make it my background color. Okay. So I've just made that the site background color as well. It's the interior backgrounds color. Now it's also the site backgrounds color. I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to refresh this. And now everything's that light green. Now, of course, that's not particularly useful. You want the page itself to be white. And the in thesis classic responsive, the page uh, well, actually, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to add a background image first. So we've got our background color. Now I'm going to add a repeating background image. And if we come over and look at our cheat sheet, I have a section for backgrounds. And this is one that creates a repeating background image that fills the entire window and repeats in both directions. And, that's, and it goes to the body tag. So I'm going to come here and copy that. Now, you notice there's an image already specified in here. You're going to replace this URL with your own image. But I'm going to copy this. Come back over to Custom CSS. And then since it's my body, I'm going to take it up to the top. and save it. Now this image actually doesn't exist in our library currently so we have to we have to bring that in and so the way we do that is to come over to our editor and go to images choose a file and then my files are here Tutorial graphics and barking chihuahua. And I want the paw print. So I say OK to that. Add the image. And now we've got our image here. So I'm just going to take this CSS reference, copy it, come back over to the custom CSS. And then replace this URL with the correct one. Actually, it turns out it was the correct one, but nevertheless, replace that URL here. Now, you could also use images that were from your media library or images that are hosted somewhere else. It doesn't really matter what you put in here, just so long as the URL is, is correct. But now when we refresh our page, we're going to have our little paw print repeated every place. Right? Okay, now that we've got that done, now we want to add a background color to our page so that it is uh, nice and white. And if you remember the page layout, we the section that contains everything else is called container. So I've got this little snippet of code here. This is, um, a where is it? background image background color that fills the page background and that's this one right here and it's going to reference dot container and it's going to just put it make the page color white okay okay so now it's saying that for the for the HTML container with the class of container make its background color white save that come back over and refresh this and now we've got a white background for our page with the colored background everywhere else however I want to jazz up my sidebar and what I want is a color that goes all the way down the sidebar and I want that color to extend all the way down even if I'm on say the news page where the sidebar is short and the content is long. And in order for me to do that, what I have to do is use a background image and place it 
a repeating background image and place it inside of the columns package. All right, remember this section was the columns box. So what we do then is first come over to the editor and add an image. And that is going to be the page background image. And this background image is 354 pixels wide and 20 pixels tall. Okay, so I've got that. Then I'm going to come back and actually I would copy it, right? My code snippet actually has it correct, so I'm not really going to need to copy it. But come back over to the custom CSS section. And then grab my code snippet which is the um, background image that fills the sidebar with a solid color and it's going to go into columns and it's taking this image and it is repeating it in the y direction and the background position starts at the top right so it's not repeating in both directions it's only repeating vertically copy that I have good videos on how to do on what that kind of stuff means right for using background images and styling um, I think it's lesson four and customized thesis like a pro which will help you sort of get a handle on this idea they will be re updated for 2.1 but they work just fine I mean the concepts are still the same okay so we've got the correct image URL it's repeating in the Y direction and it's right in top if we repeat that now now we have this dark green color that goes all the way down. Lots of times, if you just put it in the sidebar, it would stop, you know, as soon as the sidebar didn't have any more content. Now, there is a problem, though, and that is I don't want it up here. So what I'm going to do is use the CSS principle of specificity by and remove it from here. Because remember, I gave the feature box an ID of feature box. So what I'm going to say is that for the content, for the box called columns, inside of a box called feature box, don't have a background image. Okay, and so that's essentially this pound sign feature box dot columns. and then background image background image colon none okay so I'm saying in columns put this one in but in feature box columns don't put any background image in That was why I gave the feature box an ID so I could target this columns container separately from this columns container. Okay, so now we have our feature boxes white all the way across, and our sidebar has a color all the way down to the bottom, regardless of how long it is. Now, the next thing I want to do is add a color and a background image to my footer. So we're going to do that using some of this code and first we need to get our image and the image is this footer base background Give it a chance to upload here. This is 1,008 pixels wide, 125 pixels tall. It's a little different. So we'll come back over to the to the custom CSS. And I'm going to take my background image for my footer 
There's a background image that fills the top of the footer. Header, columns, content, footer. I'm going to paste it there. It's the background image URL is the image we just uploaded. We're not going to repeat it, and we want it to sit at the top of the position. Now, we're going to take a look at this, and then we're going to add a background color, and I'm going to show you something um, quite cool. So there's our background image. Now, that's not actually where I want it, so I'm going to have to add some top padding to move the footer down, and plus I want to add some background color. So we're going to add background color next. And so we're going to come along like this and say background, background color, colon. And now I'm going to show you something cool. See this thing over here? This is your variable list. And what I'm going to do is insert my variable. And the variable I want is the variable that is the um, is that dark green color. And I believe, yeah, it's also the headline color, although this is it here, the six seven is that it? Pardon me. No, it's six six nine c a four. Um, well, I'm going to stick that in here for the moment, just like that, just by clicking on it and it inserts it. Uh, I'm going to save this and go back and I've forgotten which one of my um, which color it was actually. <laughs> it, oh, it's six nine five or six seven nine D A five. So it's borders and highlights. So we'll go back to custom D A five. And I'm going to get rid of that. It's color one, six, seven, nine, DA five. Add color one there. And that'll add the background color. And then if I change those colors, it'll automatically change. All right, so now I've got this background color. Now all I really need to do is add some padding to shove this thing up into place. So I'm going to add 150 pixels of padding to the top. So padding top, 150 pixels. And in fact, now what I'm going to do, since I, there's no reason for me to have two footer things here, so I'm going to cut that out and paste it here so we have one footer designation or one footer rule. That's what this is, is a rule. Save my custom CSS, come back over, refresh it. And now we've got the image where we want it. And what's happened to our headlines? Well, our headlines are actually the same color as this. So what we want to do is change the headlines for our, um, uh, for our widget areas. And it's the same thing is true up here. We just didn't notice it, right? That changed because we, we're using the same color. So we'll come over here to our um, design and we'll look at our sidebar headings and the text color is going to be white. F, 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 F. Save those design options. Refresh our page. And now we have you know, set up our colors in a way that uh, I think works quite well. It, it could be that maybe 150 pixels was too much. Maybe we don't want, although I'm, I'm actually happy with this. I like the additional space for all that stuff. So we now have backgrounds that were set up using our custom CSS.